today we're looking at three articles from Popular Mechanics, all of which concern types of drives that can propel us further into deep space. The first one is the direct fusion drive that could get us past Neptune in 10 years. Second, we have scientists announce a physical warp drive is now possible. Seriously. Last but not least is the EM drive isn't dead yet, says the guy who invented it. So I'm a not, I'm not going to bury the lead. The EM drive is uh, possibly dead, and we're going to talk about it first because it is the most theoretically um, uh, obscure I guess of the three of the three that I'm looking at right now. So what is an EM drive? EM drive is a concept for a radio frequency resonant cavity thruster that is claimed to have potentially ap potential applications as a spacecraft thruster. What is really happening with the EM drive is it's breaking the laws of physics that we know it in order for it to work. What that boils down to is the microwave uh, frequency, the microwave particles that are bouncing around inside of the mechanism somehow produces thrust. The issue with that is, and one of the best examples, I'll have some more links down below, but think about it like being in a box with wheels. And you can push the box outside the box and the box will go forward or you can push the box with wheels while you're still in the box. And the issue with that is how do you create motion through that action? Like you're in the box and you're pushing from within the box and somehow externally the vehicle moves. That's similar to putting a fan on a boat <laughs> you know, if you have a large enough fan on a sailboat and you point the fan at the sail, will that create thrust? And it's not supposed to. And the EM drive pretty much proposes that um, the way it functions, the way it's supposed to function, somehow it does function. It does create thrust. It's been proven... Um, the feasibility of it has always been questionable since its initial proposition in um, 20 years ago. But now it's kind of dead in the water because recent experiments failed. <laughs> it failed as those recent. Um, it says, yes, the impossible engine failed critical thrust tests, but that was always going to happen this scientist claims. So if you want to read more about that one, link is in the description below. Um, like I said, it's probably dead in the water, but it's still interesting to know the um, proposed physics behind this drive. I think in order for it to work, it's probably going to be related to my previous um, review, overview of an article about quantum physics, because quantum, the quantum realm kind of allows or um, has that flexibility where you can break some of the known laws of physics and get um, a comprehensive result. Now we have scientists announce a physical warp drive is possible. Physical warp drive was something that is, um, it's a colloquial term coming from science fiction. Um, Star Trek, if you know about it, if you watched it, if you don't watch it, but if you understand the law, as far as like how it spans across um, sci-fi in a whole, if you hear about warp drive, it, imagine you are bending um, space around you, warping, in other words. So the direct fusion drive works like this. In this DFD, the propellant is first ionized, then it enters a region with a strong externally imposed magnetic field. Here, the propellant flows around the engine's core, inside which nuclear fusion reactions occur, and it is in its products heat up the propellant then the hot propellant expands into a magnetic nozzle producing thrust so like a conventional rocket engine there is a propellant that is coming out the back of the actual component that is producing thrust you know i.e the opposite reaction to a reaction um it's a gradual type of thrust but over time it can build up so it's not really creating the same type of thrust as like the explosions we get from the current rocket ships, which requires you to carry, you know, uh, literal truckloads of fuel 
in order to you know for us to get into space not let alone the rest of the solar system so this allows for a more efficient and um, practical way to explore space or all three of these proposed experimental drives one of which is already kind of a bust the em drive but the other two the warp and the direct fusion warp drive takes um a substantial amount of energy and they just now they're just now reconfiguring um their understanding of it to include more feasible elements to generate this power instead of like exotic elements like antimatter and things like anything anti is probably something that scientists want to use to fuel something else but that in itself you know dark matter as well you know how much of the universe is allegedly consisting of dark matter which is a huge you know uh, double digit percentage but we don't really know what it is nor have we interacted with it directly so the most feasible one is the direct fusion drive because it's um nuclear fusion is working on principles that we currently understand that also requires energy but produces an exponentially amount more in its reactions those are the three that scientists have been playing around with but those are three different types of drives that might allow us to explore space um within the next couple of decades and let me know which ones you think are in more in, let me know which ones you think are interesting or seem feasible to you you have the warp drive which bends space you have direct fusion which do uh fusion reaction um actually works by propelling particles that over time generates um, an exponential amount of thrust that keeps building up upon itself and then you have the em drive which is like i said most likely dead in the water but probably works on principles of quantum physics because it breaks the fundamental laws of um energy conservation of you know which is like impossible <laughs> hence why it's also called the impossible drive but still fun to you know play with to think about we don't know everything yet and the more we understand the more things challenge the laws we currently have established within the scientific community um humans when i say we not me being a actual scientist i'm an enthusiast at best <laughs> but as the human race we still have a lot to understand so which one of these drives do you think is the most feasible in the future? Um, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, share if you dig this type of science presentation. And if you want to know more about any of these specific topics like quantum energy or fusion reactions or even the principles of the EM drive, let me know. I can do a standalone video with plenty of resources because I'm learning about this most often right before I present it to you. So, web link science briefs, take care.